Charlie to Charlie to come down. I wouldn't have forgotten you, Charlie, if you would have come down here like I asked you to do. But Charlie was, but for lacrosse county, a couple years ago, Charlie took the National Shred Institute training and uh, really partnered with us over the last, really, four or five years because we really didn't put up the RFP because of the economy. Now was the right time to do it, and Charlie was still uh, ready, willing, and able to help us. So I, I really thank you, Charlie, for all the work you did. So I think we're going to pass one of these down there in case we're going to go. Uh, Brian's going to help us with chat. So if someone uh, speak loud, we'll try to repeat the question, but feel free to ask us anything. Thank you. Any questions? Clarification? Oh, question. Checks. Um, a day miles. Uh, how many uh, millions of dollars worth of public money will go into the infrastructure? Um, how many years before the TIF pays off? Um, how much fill is going to be brought in to raise it up? And uh, how soon will there be like a hundred year flood that destroys this facility? Let me try to answer the last question first. Uh, if we knew when the next hundred year flood, you know, the cross had a hundred seventy year flood in 1965. So this site is already, most of it is at, uh, the developable piece is at already the, the regional flood elevation, but we're talking about bringing it up another four or five feet. So in terms of the infrastructure costs, we know that you know developing a neighborhood like this uh, can be very expensive, uh, but if you have $80 million worth of tax base, that can amortize you know, 10 or $15 million of public investment. So we already have about 3 million, 3.2 million in property acquisition. Um, you know, Restoring the wetlands, getting grants through local foundations, the DNR, again, we hope to leverage that. But it could be, you know, eight to twelve million dollars of uh, public infrastructure. Uh, when does the TIF pay off? The TIF pays off by when the statute says it's going to be closed. But right now, again, the, right across the street, there's twenty million dollars worth of development with the Candlewood Suites, Festival Foods, uh, the old Standard Building. So that, at some point in the near future, in about five years, uh, five to seven years, that TIF then those expenses will have been paid off. Now we can use. The, the land across the street that's generating about $500,000 a year and maybe some additional city borrowing to help pay for this infrastructure. But we have, this is tip number 12, so I don't have the date in front of me when it was open and when it will close, but there's enough life left in that tip to help fund the project. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Next, anybody? Yeah. Got one over here? Okay, Bob. Brian's like Phil Donahue. First off, I want to also thank the city and the organizers of this. I have not seen, am I on? Yeah. Oh, I have not seen such an impressive array of planning count and out of town planning count with, with briefcases, so they have to be experts. Uh, and certainly citizen involvement. There's never been a project in La Crosse that has had this amount of citizen involvement and not a lot of pushback, so must be in, must be good things happening. My To get to the nut of the question, how do we ensure now that this moves through the various city boards and the council and actually begins to get done? I mean, so we don't have another 30 years of posturing and ego, ego trips and everything on the part of the city council that's gonna hold it up for the next 30 years. I think the people, and the experts here have spoken, and now we need to get going. Do, it, do any of the council members with small ego want to answer that question? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think we are already on the pathway to getting this project done. The cross, again, we've spent a lot of time in neighborhood revitalization, downtown revitalization, and this, there, just because we do this doesn't mean we're going to take our eye off the ball on some other project. So, I think this, this project's on a path forward uh, because of this group and because of all of you, um, and it, I guess the other uh, public involvement, and this project has not met a lot of resistance, and so I think uh, this, is a, this is a site, you know, waiting to happen. That's my sense. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that, but I don't want to answer all the questions no, either, because you're the expert. Well, I think part of the reason, or a big part of the reason why we've done this, why we've utilized this process, is to have all of you sign on to the plan. And as you come into the door while we've been asked, having you, uh, what do you think? What do you feel? Come back two days later. Tell us how we're doing. What have we forgotten? That, that won't stop.
up. That needs to continue. So building this support for this project through this process is really what is going to take it home. It's, a, one second. Go ahead. it's an unusual process to collapse what usually is you know, almost seven months to a year worth of normal planning time into a one week period. And uh, the momentum that one uh, experiences through that process and sleepy, sleepless nights and other things that are experienced really do become uh, valuable. You should harness it. Uh, we've worked on probably 40 of these type of charrettes and I think all but one advanced very quickly uh, because of the commitment of the community. Most of them started with the conservation projects. That's not a bias of mine. But that was the low-hanging fruit to create a wonderful place and bring people to the place so that people would fall in love with it and be willing to invest in it. So you, you have strategies that you heard some of uh, that will help mobilize, help uh, continue the inertia that's already here in my opinion. Well, I, I was just going to say that uh, <clears throat> this is one of those wonderful opportunities as you look at the community and the history. I mean, you are a community that's here for a reason. The river, the coolies, the bus. You have an incredible downtown. You've got a collection of prestigious institutions. <clears throat> You've got the second most popular uh, university in the city. States university system, you get international trade, and here you have a site that's been underutilized and kind of overlooked. Yet, the pre European settlement, the Native Americans knew this site, they utilized it. And what's kind of interesting is uh, we've always been challenged as we talk about Barren Island, Betty Bowen, the currents. Uh, you go up and down, it's a working river, you get the new north side community center and the beaches are wonderful. You've got Copeland, Veterans Park. But when you're downtown, there's very few places where you can actually touch the water. And, and I don't mean to be disrespectful or cavalier, the water's high, the water's fast right now. But a couple of months from now, when you go down there, it is one of the most incredible places to walk along that soft, sandy edge and, and just enjoy the river, enjoy the shoreline. So here's a place. Live downtown, take advantage of downtown, walk to work, attract out of town visitation, get that transient marina, and develop this. There's some of you out there that are property owners. There's some of you that have incredible leadership pop out skills. Uh, there's some of you that have invested in this community <clears throat> in terms of attracting, uh, making uh, La Crosse a, a, a destination for tourism, ecotourism, the festivals, the cultural events. Everybody out there has a skill set and has an interest. So why can't we make this happen? Is status quo acceptable? That's my challenge to you. We're here for you. Are you here for you? And why can't we make Could you list out some of the nature tourism potentials, like a full range of different possibilities? Well, <laughs> so Steve's going to be here a lot. Steve will be here a lot, but I just, I mean, I do a lot of waterfronts, and I, I'm not the, I'll 